dear students viewers today i would like to discuss the poem asleep in the valley by arthur rabo you know arthur rabo was a french poet his full name is jean nicola arthur rabo Rabu was born in the year 1854 and died in 1891 he is generally known as the juvenile poet because he wrote his best poetry between the uh, ages uh, 16 and 20 so at the very prime of his life he become a successful french poet Rabu was uh, associated with the modernist literary movements such as uh, symbolism and surrealism so symbolism and surrealism are the two literary movements that had a uh, great impact on the poetry as well as on the other literary uh, forms like music and common arts arthur rabo as a poet had influenced the uh, british poet dylan thomas and the american poet allen ginsberg rabo was a master of the uh, arts cap or the uh, technique poetic technique Uh, he is one of the first poets uh, to write in free verse what is free verse free verse uh, is a verse where we don't have any regular stanza pattern rhythm and rhyme etc so uh, let's learn about the uh, poem asleep in the valley you should remember that asleep in the valley was uh, originally written in french as uh, le dormiu du val so this is the original french title you know and the english translation is asleep in the valley so uh, uh, what is the theme of the poem asleep in the valley you know asleep in the valley is a poem about war that you should remember that this poem does not glorify war but rather it uh, depicts the futility of war the uh, pity of war so in this poem you see that the poet has uh, used the sonnet form or the sonnet structure what is sonnet sonnet is a poem of 14 lines uh, you know there are two typical forms of sonnet the shakespearean sonnet form and the petrarchan sonnet pattern so in this poem uh, arthur rabo uh, used uh, the petrarchan sonnet form that is the italian sonnet form uh, because you uh, have the stanza pattern that uh, the uh, stanza divisions that octave and sister what is octave octave is a stanza of eight lines uh, here the lines are divided into two stanzas uh, consisting of two quatrains quatrain a uh, stanza of four lines so uh, in the octave part you have uh, two quatrains that is uh, eight lines and in the sestet part you have the two uh, stanzas of three lines each so structurally speaking the poem is a uh, sonnet and uh, sonnet is uh, one of the uh, forms of the lyric you know lyric is the expression uh, direct expression of the poet's thought and uh, feelings so in this poem arthur rabo expresses his feelings about the war now arthur rabo had the uh, first hand experience of war and he understood the futility of war he was a, a soldier poet he uh, was a soldier by profession and he took writing poetry as his avocation that is the secondary profession 
So Rabu was a soldier in the Dutch colonial army in the year 1876. And uh, he wrote this poem a year later, that is 1877. So the year of composition of the poem is 1877. The background of the poem is the war between the two nations, uh, France and Russia. So the poem is a war poem uh, delineating the futility or the pity of war, where war is not any glamorous uh, event. It's a, um, uh, it's a uh, method of uh, shame, it's a method of uh, butchery, where the soldiers uh, fall a victim to the um, war. So let's read the poem. A small green valley where a slow stream flows. So in the very beginning of the poem, we see that a small green valley. So first of all, we know valley. What is valley? Valley uh, stands for uh, places or hollow uh, lands uh, between the mountains. Where a slow stream uh, flows, so a uh, stream, a uh, river flows uh, downwards the mountains and leaves long strands of silver on the bright. The bright river seems to be romantic, um, flowing uh, from the uh, mountains and uh, in the sun rays, the river seems to be bright, as bright as silver. Grass from the mountain top stream the sun's rays, they fill the hollow pool of light. So the sun's rays fill the hollow pool of light. So the uh, mountains uh, appear to be illuminated in the uh, help of the, with the help of the sun rays. The sun rays uh, illuminated, illuminate the mountain top and the rivers seem to be as bright as silver. This is the first question, the first four uh, lines. And let us come to the second question. In the second question you see that a soldier very young lies open mouth. So the soldier is the protagonist, the principal character. How is the soldier described in the poem? Young. The soldier is young and he lies open mouth. So probably the poet uh, has an autobiographical touch because he was the juvenile poet and had the soldier as a poet soldier. The soldier is also very young. A pillow made of fern beneath his head. What is pillow made of? The pillow is made of fern. So the uh, fern made uh, pillow uh, supports the head of the soldier when the soldier lies in the valley, lies asleep in the valley. So apparently it seems a romantic picture that a soldier relaxes in the midst of nature, in the midst of, uh, in the lap of valley, a romantic valley, asleep stretch it in the heavy undergrowth. Heavy undergrowth stands for the bushes and plants um, that uh, grow rapidly in the uh, nature, in the natural surroundings of the valley. Asleep stretch it in the valley. So who is asleep in the valley? A young soldier is asleep in the valley. Pale in his one, Green sun soaked sun -soak bed. Pale, the soldier uh, in his uh, sleep uh, seems to be pale, that is colorless. In his one green, uh, green that is the uh, valley, uh, full of green, green color that stands for the vegetation or the uh, <coughs> growth of the plants and bushes. A sun soaked bed. 
had we come to know about um, the uh, sleep um, sleep like state of the soldier had the bed as well as a pillow stand for the comfort of the soldier so apparently the soldier seems to be asleep in the bed that is sanso so um, i told you uh, an art style uh, ago a little while ago that the soldier is asleep in the midst of the valley in the lap of the valley where the um, pillow is made of the fern and the bed is uh, like a uh, sand soaked bed his feet uh, among the flowers so let us come to the second uh, stanza that is the first uh, line of the uh, sestet line number 9 uh, uh, his feet among the flowers whose feet are among the flowers the soldier's feet are among the flowers so this is the romantic picture a fantastic picture that suggests that the bed is full of flowers uh, the flowers cover the feet of the soldier when he sleeps in the valley his smile is like an infant gentle without guile so the innocence of the soldier is uh, beautifully described through a simile the figurative device simile what is simile simile is a comparison between uh, two dissimilar things with the help of a linker so here the linker is used like the smile of the soldier is just like that of an infant so gentle pure and without guile so there is innocence there is a uh, gentleness in the smile of the soldier when he lies uh, asleep in the valley and there is no pretense there is no any guile in the smile now the question arises what makes the soldier smile prior to his uh, sleep here uh, this is very uh, interesting point that as we come closer Uh, to the picture where the soldier seems to be asleep in the valley of uh, nature keep him warm he may catch cold the poet makes an address to nature you know mother nature that nature uh, keep him warm so uh, the poet uh, here invokes uh, entreats the nature to keep the soldier warm because he is asleep uh, under the open sky and he may catch cold the soldier may catch cold maybe in uh, uh, peril of uh, catching cold now let us come to the last stanza uh, in this stanza you see that humming insects don't disturb his rest the poet once again makes a request to the insects that make continuous sounds humming insect uh, so humming insect don't uh, don't disturb the uh, rest of the soldier now is it a uh, rest it is the relax that the soldier um, experiences in the midst of nature no this is not actually the relax or less, not the uh, sleep if the uh, if it is a rest this is the eternal rest if someone is dead we say that rest in peace so in the uh, uh, line we see the rest means the eternal rest so here is uh, we see the real picture that whether the soldier is asleep or whether he is a dead he sleeps in sunlight on hand on his breast at peace in his uh, side there are two red holes so at the very climax climax means uh, that is the point the had the um, ideas are arranged in an ascending order of in, importance just like taking this or asleep here it seems that in his sight there are two red holes the most significant point is the is hinted at the very uh, concluding line that two red holes what do the two red holes stand for here 
uh, two red holes uh, suggest that the soldier is dead. And the red holes stand for the bullet wounds marked by blood at his side, at the uh, side of his body. We find the two red holes marked by blood. So the soldier is no longer asleep, no longer at a relaxing mood, but the soldier is dead. So in this poem, you see that uh, I told you um, a little while ago at the very beginning of my uh, discussion that Arthur Rabo was involved in the literary movement of surrealism. Surrealism uh, presents a picture, a fantastic picture, an uh, 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 asleep in the valley. The soldier seems to be asleep in the valley, but after the uh, close reading of the text, close reading of the poem, we come to note that the soldier is no longer asleep in the valley. This is no longer a romantic poem, picture. This is a realistic picture that the soldier is shot dead in the valley. At the time of fighting, he got injured. He got wounded by the two red holes uh, at his uh, side. And he is uh, dead. He is lying dead in the lap of nature under the open sky. But the Right from the beginning, uh, we are under the spell of a romantic picture that the soldier seems to be asleep in the valley. But after the reading of the poem, we come to know that the soldier is dead. So this is the image. The poet has used a number of images. What is image? Image is a picture made out of words. And uh, he also used... Uh, a number of uh, figurative devices like uh, simile, irony. Irony. What is irony? That irony is a figure of speech in which the very opposite of what is said is intended. So here it is said that the soldier is asleep in the valley. But it is intended. The intended meaning is uh, that the soldier is uh, no more alive. The soldier is no more uh, asleep. But the soldier is dead. So the title has been used ironically. There are uh, some questions I can uh, uh, tell you. Um, that at peace in his sight, there are two red holes. So what do two red holes refer to here? What does this line suggest? The concluding line, the significance of the concluding line. This is an important question. Uh, give the substance of the poem Asleep in the Valley. Uh, question number three. The poem Asleep in the Valley is uh, um, uh, centered around two contrasting pictures. Discuss. Next question. Describe the graphic picture of the valley in the poem. What is the central theme of the poem? I told you the theme of the poem is the futility of war or the, um, the pity of war. So uh, this is the uh, topic uh, today I have discussed. Um, Asleep in the Valley is a poem about uh, war. It's a uh, war poem. Arthur uh, Rabot uh, is a French poet. Uh, so. Uh, you should uh, go through the text and you will uh, understand the significance of the title, the significance of the poem and the background of the poem. Mm, everything you will uh, learn when you go through the uh, text, when you um, closely read the text. So in my discussion I have tried to make you understand, hope that you have understood uh, the poem. Thank you. Now, in the screen, you see a few multiple choice questions. Try to recapitulate my discussions on the poem and
try to answer. I would like to check your answer later on. Thank you.